Stories are the foundation of human behavior. In that, we seem to diverge completely from the rest of the species in this realm. This does not mean that the stories the human mind needs to function are a negative thing, necessarily, and quite the opposite. Stories are the signposts that guide thought. Without them, humans wouldn't exist, and without humans also wouldn't exist the potential to retrieve and manifest the essence's treasure, that is, the ability to connect to truth, even if only slightly, and to recognize the realm for what it is. Sometimes we may be led to believe that it would be best if we didn't exist, but then who would acknowledge and realize our inexistence? Truth is not non-existence, quite the opposite, it is existing truly. Once upon a time, apparently, our stories, however, seem to have not been written even though writing had been invented. To our current way of thinking, this may seem a very imbecile fallacy, as an account that is not written can easily be subject to alteration. This didn't seem to bother much our more advanced ancestors, if this assumption is true. In fact, I propose that this made perfect sense for a kind of mindset, perhaps the mindset of a different kind of human animal. A story works always as a guiding background so that mental concepts that have already been learned and digested are not required to be thought about and rediscovered every time they are pertinent to the context. If a certain fruit is found good for eating, then the background stories will reflect that, removing the need for a arduous, repetitive and unproductive assessment every time one finds it. Still, that guiding background of a more practical direction in this example, such as a story about the recognition of edible plants, or a more transcendent one, such as a recognition of knowing, uh, or knowing of an aspect or a glance of truth, is only important as far as the outline goes. Once details set in, they become their own points of discussion, instead of the essence of the story itself. It would seem at first to the current mindset very pertinent to write down all these helpful stories, making a more or less permanent record that would serve as an unaltered reference for future generations. However, an unwritten story has an ability that surpasses its written counterpart. It is able to evolve alongside language and, with that, maintain its purest outline more or less intact. A written story is stagnant. A written story is therefore prone to become sacred in its written details, or set in stone, and to, with that sacredness, become more important than its pure outline. Stories that are not written, but that are transmitted verbally, have exactly that ability to adapt to changing contexts without necessarily losing the inherent knowledge they were created to preserve. In the practical example given before, the story about the edible fruit, may over time also eventually transmit that the fruit is also good to make juice, not just eating. It is the same fruit, it identifies, but the story's outline is valid whether you live in a culture that simply eats fruits, or in another that makes juices and jams out of them. Sort of metaphorically speaking, of course. An unwritten story has the ability to transmute to match the listener's mind without the danger of sacredness of a cumulative script and dogmatic details. This is completely a completely different mindset, one that is now even alien to our context, and I would say alien in the true sense, not in the sense of extraterrestrial as sold culturally, uh, but in the sense of beyond the realm of Terra or Earth's realm. By this I mean that this realm is a place of detail, a world where details are there to be uncovered and worshipped. 
Isn't this what all organized religions attempt to do, including scientism? However, two conclusions are obtained when honestly seeking to uncover all details. One is that it reaches a certain point where details are unable to be uncovered further, either due to our senses' inability, even with the help of technology, in the cases where technology isn't also part of a fraud, or due to the evidence that the details aren't as solid or existent as they first seemed. In these cases, organized religions will resort to mysteries or riddles to hide the fact that either they don't know or that it can't be known mentally. While scientism will resort to outright fraud, claiming knowledge and inventing smaller narratives and mathematical uh, riddles supported by false visual or other kind of representations. The other conclusion is that, although after a certain threshold, we are unable to properly uncover more details, it becomes evident that it's as if the details are being generated as we look for them. I said it's as if because in my contemplation I do not see it as new details being generated, but as the outline of ourselves being reflected back. What does this mean? I postulate that it means that this realm, as a construct, exists as a sort of plastic mask imposing the rules of the limited details onto truth, which has no limits and just is its own rules. Naturally, these details attempt to copy and set in stone the outline of truth in our minds which are already made up of the same copied and false details, while reversing the outline exactly because, being a copy, it can never be truth, and if it is not truth, it can only be its opposite, to a degree or another. We really do require written stories if we are to preserve, at least, what it isn't truth as such written accounts can pose as a warning about the attacks uh, our minds have been continuously under and will be continuously under as long as we remain in the realm. Why so? Because to power the details, the realm needs connections to truth, essences such as only humans can properly provide, although other animals uh, do too to a different degree. Yet, if left alone, the human mind will tend to rest and give, away, uh, give way to the outline of truth, disregarding the details as of less importance. This the devil cannot allow. Hence, its and its minions' continuous attempts at temptation to get us hooked to the world, to its details. In writing, we do need a record of the lies. Still, they, the minions of the world, have been writing stories for much longer than we have. They have always dealt with the irrelevance of irrelevant but sacred texts, infested with clusters of purposefully tainting details that override the importance of the outline of the true message it was supposed to convey. They have even learned a long time ago how to write fiction into the stories to guide human behavior. We are new, or maybe not new, but by our nature, alien to this place, more naive at this, and we are, those of us who are, closer to the purity of our ancestors when they were telling their stories without ever writing them down. We are inexperienced and often gullible at it, because we tend to prefer to believe that we are in our source, instead of realizing that this world is its opposite. There may even come a time when we will have to throw our records away and face the danger of losing such precious knowledge, lest it become another sacred text and we become priests of our own details in them. Now is not that time, yet. 
They have enhanced their written stories to a higher level. They are now moving pictures with sound, video. They tell us much more than a thousand words and gui guide us far quicker and more imposingly. It is, up to current times, the most effective method for them to preserve and divulge written sacred detailed stories to guide the behavior of growing numbers of people. There is no need now for them to, for example, send a missionary to invest years trying to convert people into whichever story was required for their goals. A simple video clip can do all that in a few minutes or seconds. Don't take me wrong, it is not the technology of writing or video making that I'm putting at stake here. After all, I am using it to reach you. I am instead asking the question of what humans in the future, for those who will have a future freer from such insanity but still in the realm, will consider worthy of storing. Maybe nothing at all. Maybe there should actually, at that time, occur, uh, occur a, a true book burning, where all the devil's details are dissolved. Will whatever is kept and stored from this mind war enable the return of the same insanity we face today, sometime in the future, for them? The truth seekers, in all the detail seeking, eventually come to a point where they realize, like the organized religions and scientism, that the details are not truth. It then becomes a matter of slicing reality to eliminate as many untruths as possible. That destroys the cushion stories. What then? What lies beyond when we have discovered everything truth is not? Can I say it again? Truth speaks no words, and its story has no details. <laughs>